Hi, I'm Bill Vigu, and this is part four in another look at the rapture. And I'm referring to a book that Dr. Roy Hicks wrote that has had a great influence on a lot of people. Some things I agreed with, some things I have to take issue with. Now, in last session, I was talking about the four big obstacles that stand in the way for, for the body of Christ to come into agreement in regards to the rapture. We're divided. We're split over this particular rapture. And I believe there are four major reasons. The first reason is that we're not rightly dividing the word of God in regarding the coming of the Lord. In our English translation, the word, the coming of the Lord, is referred to many, many times, but in the literal translation, where when it was spoken and written in the Greek, there were two events that were referred to, two different Greek words that were translated coming in our English Bible. And the first one refers to the appearing of the Lord, which I believe is referring to uh, before the tribulation period, where he will appear in the heavens and in the clouds, and those that were, are with him will have a forceful seizure, caught up to be with the Lord. The other one is the advent of the Lord, where he will come back at the, second, uh, at the end of the tribulation period. The second major hurdle is uh, that many people believe that it's one event but yet the rapture itself there are a series of raptures just like there is a there are a series of uh, resurrections of the dead there are a series of raptures that we have to consider number three uh, that the rapture is not part of our salvation the gift of salvation was a free gift the rapture is a reward that you need to tune into down the road in that session because it is clearly identifiable in the Word of God. And the fourth one which I want to deal with today is that the, the, the rapture or the forceful seizure is not going to take every single member of the body of Christ or every single born-again Christian in a pre-tribulation rapture. I have serious concerns with that teaching. I believe it has a problem in two angles. Number one, it is absolutely not scriptural. It's based on a phrase that is taken out of context. And secondly, the fruit of people that believe in that wishful thought. They seem to have laid down their uh, zeal for God, their, their, their zeal to serve God and to be servants and to persevere in the knowledge and the growth of God. They, they're just content with the idea that, hey, we're going to go before everything falls apart, so you know, that's, all I, that's all I worry about, and they're not pressing in the kingdom of God. Now, let me give you four reasons why I believe not every Christian is going to go in the rapture. Number one reason is the reference itself. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Most of the emphasis on that phrase is the we part. Paul included himself when you think about it, and he didn't get raptured. But he was saying, we that are alive and remain. At that time, we're all going to go. Clearly, Paul was saying that. But the key word in that phrase is the word then. Then we which are alive and remain. And he identifies the moment when that's going to happen. Any Christian alive at this particular time, they will all be caught up together with the Lord. But that then is referring to the resurrection of the, uh, of the just. And that is not going to take place until the, uh, the uh, seven-year tribulation period is over or the literal return of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's important for you to look at in that verse. Then we, which we, are, we, are, then we which are alive, the resurrection of the dead does not take place before the tribulation period starts. It takes place at the end of the tribulation period. Then all of the dead in Christ will be rised, in, raised, including the many that will get saved during that period of the tribulation period. Then there are other things, that are many other things, but let me give you three more. There's the parable of the ten virgins. Now, they were all virgins. The Bible tells us, or Jesus tells us, five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. But he tells us that they, they were all virgins. They were all called. They were all waiting for the Lord to return. They all had lamps. They all knew that they were to trim their lamps. They all knew that they were supposed to have oil in their lamp. But only five of them had oil. The other five had not prepared themselves with the oil of the Lord or prepared themselves with the truths of God and the anointing of God, the Holy Spirit. And so five went and five were left behind. Then there's also the reference that Jesus had said, the days of Noah, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be with the coming of the Lord, the second advent, I mean the advent of the Lord. And when you look at that story closely, Noah did not get raptured. The eight souls that were in that boat did not get raptured, but there was a man in the days of Noah that was raptured, a man that walked closer to God than even Noah had walked closer to God. And the Bible says that he walked with God and he was not, for God took him. 
God forcefully seized him, and Enoch was raptured. This was before that flood that came play, that took place, and Noah went through the flood. And he, God, of course, had a purpose for Noah. And there are some people that are going to, I believe, Christians today that are learning about the things of God, but they're not responding, not applying themselves with the oil of the Holy Spirit. And when this pre-tribulation rapture comes, they will not be ready. They will not be prepared. And they'll be left behind, and they'll have a purpose in serving during that tribulation period. The fourth thing I want to mention today, and there are many other things, references in the Bible, is in Luke chapter 17 where Jesus said, Remember Lot's wife? Jesus had said, and as the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, or in the days of Lot. Well, what had happened? The angels came to get Lot out, and his wife and his sons and his daughters, but Lot's wife didn't make it. She had a ticket to ride out of that, tribu that, that destruction. She had a, a, uh, she had a ticket to ride. She had a free pass. She was supposed to be taken out. She was supposed to be taken out before the destruction came. But she did not go. And Jesus made the reference, remember Lot's wife. We need to consider these scriptures here. Jesus is telling us, don't be like Lot's wife. Have a ticket to ride. You can escape the tribulation. You can be accounted worthy if you pray and you watch. Watch, Jesus said, watch and pray to his disciples. Jesus said, watch and pray that you be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are coming on the earth and to stand before the Son of Man. Remember, Lot's wife is very important for you to consider. Stay tuned to part five. God bless.